All right, today we're going to show a different way of doing a tantalum capacitor replacement. Um, as we know on several MacBook boards, that uh, some of the capacitors can become troublesome due to age, heat, and whatnot, and we like to replace them with something better. Now, typically, to date, we replace them with um, polymer caps, which are much larger. So like in a typical example, say if we're replacing this one, the polymer cap might be the size of this one, and we've got to move things around a fit. The alternative technique that uh, I'm going to experiment with, and hopefully work, is to use 1206 size ceramic capacitors, 100 microfarad a piece. Uh, I've used this technique before when we had the Toshiba NEC Tekon uh, token, sorry, NEC token capacitor values, which are typically 900 to 1200 microfarad, and we would replace them with um, 9 to 1200 microfarad ceramic capacitors. So I'll just show you the ones that we've got here. The capacitors are usually rated at 6.3 volts, so it's no problem at all to... Uh, yeah. So these are the caps. You can see they're roughly similar size in terms of width, so it should be easy to put it down. Uh, there is one trick though, a lot of these tandem capacitors that we're replacing, they're 330 microfarad, so you probably want to jam a third one in there, but we'll deal with how to do that. We'll show you how to deal with that shortly. Uh, okay, uh, I guess your method of getting this off is going to vary, so pick your poison, so to speak. I'm just, because I don't care about this board, this is just a donor board I'm demonstrating on. I'm just going to go right ahead and hot air it off. If it's in a more delicate situation, I will just um, solder either side, let it solder and lever it off that way. But we're just going to go all out with this one. I think I need more airflow here. Yeah. I need, I need to get my quick air station. This one's good for iPhones, but sometimes struggles with the MacBooks. Yeah, we're just roasting this. Uh, let's push it up to 100%, 100%. Let's go. Finally. Let's get some lead solder down on that. That's a little excessive. Wick off, <coughs> wick off the excess. This got nice, fresh, clean pads. Yeah, that should do. That's good. Get some flux. And to start with, we're just going to drop two down. Should work. Now this should give you 200 microfarads. Which, interestingly, if you do have a 300 microfarad tantalum cap, it will probably work. But it wouldn't do a slightly. Okay, so they're in. 
If you want to go for 300, try not to burn your fingers. We can just. You could technically go up to 400 easily enough on this. Just a bit of solder there, a little bit of solder there. More flux. And we're done. Now if you're paranoid about the ESR of that combination there, you can just you know, build up solder on the side. But it should be pretty good. From tests on a 300, I have found that I'm at the limit of my marks up there. I found 200 seems to work alright with the ceramics, but if you want to go microfarad from microfarad, then you can put the third on there and get 300. So yeah, that seems to work. It's a different way of doing it. It's a little more fiddly in some ways, but you don't have to move coils or caps around. Just watch out for the exposed pads, like you don't want to touch places you don't want to go. But um, yeah, so there we go. Alternative method. See how it goes, let me know.